is how I insert a busk. Um, there's many uh, places that you can find you videos, tutorials on where you can get inserting a busk into a corset. Uh, so I use pretty much the method that everyone else uses is, if you can see it here, but I put my busk along and everywhere that there is the loop parts. I make a notch on either side. What I do is I, and you won't see it because it's white thread here, but I sew up here, lift my foot and needle, bring it over to this side, stitch up, stitch up, stitch up, stitch up, stitch, all over the top. And this at your seam allowance. So you want to make sure that's at your seam allowance. For this corset, it's five eighths of an inch. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done that already to my cutiel and my uh, facing here, which is just um, like a canvas, like a cotton canvas that I got to thrift store. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this in and now how you insert it is that. to insert all your little spaces. And then what you'll have is your fashion fabric or couture, whatever's on the outside that's showing, and then all of your loops here. So what I like to do is, I don't have one. Oh, there it is. Take a pressing bar, or you could use a zip tie. And to hold it in place, I just kind of weave this in. <laughs> it's obviously easier said than done. Okay, so that's going to keep that nice and tight so it's not falling out. So now what I like to do is pull all this nice and tight, grab a pin to where you're going to top stitch it. So you feel to where the edge is and just put pin. You get it all the way around and even the top and the bottom. Sew it on our spoon bust on the tab side. And now all I'm gonna do is line up these pieces top and bottom where I want them to sit. And remember with the spoon bust, it curves. So they're not gonna match up top and bottom unless you put that pressure to make it flat and then they'll line up top and bottom. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put it nice and close all the way around, but not overlapping just so that I get that good finish. And then the way that your knobs work is that they don't sit inside here. They sit in this little squared piece. So that's where you're gonna wanna put your knobs. Right in there. Just draw in that spot so that you know where you're putting all of your knobs. And I said that already. I'm gonna make a little tiny mark there for the top and bottom, just like a tiny one, so that I can erase it later if I need to. Okay, so I'll show you here how when you insert, you insert it into the round parts, and then you pulls out on tension. So the bottom actually sits far out. 
So that's the point you want to mark. All right, makes sense. All right. Wow, it's hard to get out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my awl. I'm going to mark, I'm going to punch those holes out with my awl. And then I'm going to work in these into here. I gotta find my all. I'm not sure where it is. There's so much stuff in my room. All. Pointy. This one is a clover. So I'm gonna go on the inside. Not the lining, but just the fashion fabric and coutille. And I'm going to that hole. Just gently work it in. Now let's see if we did it enough. Nope, not enough. That's okay. We at least have a guide hole. And then punching it through the back usually helps too, because that's where the knobs will poke through. I must say. So you're just gonna flip that ender. Make it nice and flat. I'm gonna put some clips, some wonder clips along the bust to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm gonna do a top stitch all the way around through that curve. And I'll be right back. Okay, so next we're gonna match Nor my, my numbers. I messed the numbers up. So we're gonna do the double notches together. Pin this gore in. Sew it and also do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we've got our first gore on. In the front. Obviously I have not pressed it. But we're gonna go ahead and get this guy matched up notch here notch there and sew this down here on both sides. I'm gonna work on our back piece next. Um, I have added basically the salvage. So for when the salvage starts here is where the pattern is. I've added, well, more, I've kept the, the salvage. Um, and as you can see, this is the pattern piece originally. So when this is folded, I'm gonna have that extra material um, to support the grommets. So, all I gotta do now is press it. sandwiching all those raw edges in and they're gonna act as just more fabric for my grommets to go into. So when I do this pressing again I want to make sure that none of my lining is going to be showing. So I almost sort of overlap a little bit extra of my fashion fabric. 
press that so that it doesn't end up rolling the other way and showing the lining. Make sure it's a nice press pulling edge. Probably gonna throw some wonder heaps on there. Just to make sure that when it cools, it's still hot in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it the other side. Okay, so I have the back pieces here, left and right. And what I've done in, in pencil, I've drawn out my boning channel line. So a bone's gonna go here, and a bone's gonna go here. And the center is where I'm going to have my grommets. This is my grommet press. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna line it up, top and bottom, and I'm gonna mark equally in equal spaces all the way up in this center channel where I'm gonna put all my grommets. So I haven't figured that out yet, so I'm gonna figure that out and I'll let you know what that spacing is gonna be. Okay, so I figured an inch from the top, I would start, go every inch, six down, until I got to my waist. I lined up my waist, divided it by half, decided within this inch I wanted two. So I have two close together for the waist, and then an inch for every one past this point. For a six on the bottom, six on top, two in the middle. So 14 in total, and that gives me lots of space on the bottom. I feel like it might be a bit long, so it's probably better that I stop it about here. If I need to put another one in, there is that space if I need to. It would just be a little uneven on the bottom. But for, I mean, if you really were looking at, you know, the top being six and the bottom being six, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's torsos are different. And originally, I'm sure that before I elongated the top, uh, it probably would have much less on the top. So um, this is how I do it. Sometimes it says inch and a half spacing. I like one inch spacing because you can get more grommets in. Um, and these grommets are pretty small. So I'll go ahead and press these all in and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, I got my grommets in. I know I said that I only was gonna put two, but I actually put four at the waist. Um, so these, these kinda, one, two, three, four kind of thing. Um, yeah, I feel like it was probably gonna work out better doing it this way. Oh, to the other ones, and hopefully I can get this middle to look a little nicer. I mean, this is why I do covered eyelids, right? <laughs> because they're not always the prettiest. I'm kind of stuck with whatever these, you know, these guys are. Um, they're not a size that, like, makes sense to reorder from anywhere, so I don't, once that bag's done, I don't know, I might have to get a different ground press. But I guess that's what you get for, like, spending $60 on an Amazon purchase. <laughs> so I might actually splurge and get a better one that actually does like proper grommets. Like I use those, you know, 144 gross pack of grommets that I have and nothing to put them in with. So all right, here I go. Okay, so what I've done is I've got my bus scores here, and all I do for my bus scores is I sew just the one piece, 
and then I sew this piece on this piece, and then I join this side, this seam here. I do the same thing on both. Um, I find that it's easier to just sew this piece and then continue to sew from here down to the gores. Um, I've added some tape here. I'll also be doing boning channels for the seams. I'll do double boning. And for that, I'll just cover it with this twill tape. Over the bones like that. I might use thicker stuff. I'm not sure yet. And this piece still needs to be pressed, but I thought I'd show you what I've got so far. So you got all my grommets on the one side, all my channels here, here, sewn, and then I've got I've got these pieces here that I will sew in. And all I do is I follow the existing sewing line that they already have when I attach it. And then that way you still have the full width of the bone casing. Um, yeah, I shall probably do that now. So this one's kind of already been pressed. And these channels have been sewn in. These four. Everything's been nice and pressed. So I will do that to this side. And yeah, and then probably try it on after I got that. I'll put the bones in to these ones in the back. And then try it on and see how it fits. If I have to end up adding that hip gore, then I'll know before putting my bones in. So I have a feeling that I'm probably going to have to do something with this seam or this seam at the bottom, if anything, because that's where I get the most hip spring action. So we'll see how that goes. Sorry for the background noise. It's just noise in my house all the time. So I will go ahead and do this side and come back. So I hope that you can see, but I'm going to line up my zipper foot to the very edge of this bone channel. And I found that with a center position for my needle actually works perfectly for this. So I'm go ahead and do a bit of stitching. little trick to make this go a little faster if you sew the right sides of all your channels first then move your press move your presser foot over and do the left sides of all of them it goes way faster than switching for each channel okay so what I have done is I have stitched down on all of the seams. Seam. I have stitched down the 
seam allowance. And I have measured out some twill tape. And what I will do is I have centered the twill tape with the seam and I will just sew it down on either side. I'll do that throughout. Now when I get to where the gores are, I use this size of twill tape as opposed to this size. Um, this one I can, like both will fit my boning. Um, the only difference is that this one will get just sewn down on either side. The bone goes through. These ones will, let's see here if I can guess. will get sewn on this side, but only to, only to the seam allowance. Then, pressed flat and sewn down. Um, this actually gives me enough space to put my bones in, um, and I save on having to use very wide twill tape. Um, it'll just create less bulk, uh, I hope. Uh, it should cre create less bulk. So um, I'll show you, I've already done this. So I've already done this over here. And as you can, you can't even really tell that I've done it except for the fact that I have top stitched here, stitching here and stitching here, but when I flip it over, there's only two lines of stitches. So that's because this one is just top stitched and then this outer one is This outer one is the one that's actually being stitched down. So, okay, so what happens is my bone fits inside the channel. I mean, this boning does fit because it's pretty, pretty skinny, but the boning that's intended for this is not going to fit in the tiny spot here. So, did some troubleshooting and if I do it like that then I have more space and I can get that seam allowance in there making this stronger on either side so we have got everything done I'll just uh, I went through and did all the little bits put on all the finishing touches flossed it and realized that I didn't actually hit record for any of it. So I'm going to let you know now what I did. Uh, so I just attached some of that half inch twill tape on the tops and the bottoms. So all I did was I sewed it to the bit of seam allowance that was at the top um, and, and bottom, and then pressed it up. Um, I will do more stitching to keep it up but for the most part it is up and not really going anywhere so I maybe I'll come back to it it's very wearable I, I have actually wore it a few times now so that's good and then all I did was I all stitched the top ribbon lace and the bottom lace I know you don't need bottom lace but I love lace so whichever. I also did flossing. I know a lot of corsets are the same flossing throughout. I like to just do whatever. So I do make it the same on both sides so it doesn't look super weird. Um, as you can see, you know, these are the same on each bone. So at least it's not you know, way out to lunch, but this busk fits in really nice. I 
yeah, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, like I said I might have to take out some uh, in the hips just to allow for more, um, I guess, whatever you want to call it, skin, flesh, to basically go from the waist out to the hips. Uh, however, I didn't feel that I needed to. I could have if I wanted to lace the waist smaller, but I don't really. I only have very little for reduction, so it doesn't add a bunch to the hips. Um, I'd much prefer to have a more of a 10 inch difference. So the circumference of the waist and the circumference of the hips being a difference of 10 inches. And then also the same for the bust as well. So bust, I got no problem there. There's lots, lots there in the bust. So the hips though, I was actually, it was actually okay. Uh, I didn't mind how it fit, how it felt. So I am um, just okay with how that, how that feels. So I have a few photos of it, of me wearing it, but I mean, I'll be wearing it all the time. So flip it around to the back side here. I've laced it with bunny ears and I have flat cord that I bought a really big roll of it. So I really am stuck using it. Um, I lace up bunny ears. Uh, so there's there's some of the tutorials on how to lace bunny ears, so I won't go into it. But basically, when you pull the top of the loops, the top closes. When you pull the bottom, the bottom closes. So that's basically just how that goes. Last thing is I got to use one of my new stamps, KSW Corsets. I have these stamps made and I use a waterproof uh, ink so even though I don't wash this corset, it won't bleed or anything onto say my combinations or even if I wear it with modern clothes it's not going to bleed with sweat. So. That is a bonus. Anyways, that is my new corset from the Laughing Moon 100, um, the Silverado. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and like and subscribe. If you want to uh, get notified for more, hit the bell. And we will see you guys for my next video project, which is probably going to be the Truly Victorian 430, the 1878 Polonaise. Um, I think that I'm going to be making View B. And I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to make this view here with the bib. I'm going to make alternating colors. I'll, I'll even grab the colors for you. Lining, inner lining but alternating this purple taffeta silk that I have. Uh, actually, I was, I didn't do a burn test on it. I assumed that it wasn't silk, but it actually is. And it uh, is kind of like a golden iridescence to it. Like in the solid, you can see the gold. So it's actually super cool. And that gold works good for this stuff. gold for view B. So I'm not sure in which combination. I will have to figure that out as I don't have enough of one of these fabrics to do the entire thing, which is fine because I think that mix match is going to be just amazing. And from what I can tell was actually very period correct to have mix matched and um, well, not, not necessarily mix match, but like matching colors, um, complementary to each other colors. So that's kind of my next project. And 
right now I just have a giant flat queen sheet that I picked up from a thrift store that I'm going to use for my mock-up for it. Um, 